Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is a Monday. Actually, it's not technically. It's Tuesday. It's very late. And I have a travel day tomorrow, so I won't be updating. And I wanted to make a quick video tonight to kind of let you all know how things are going this week. Over the course of the last year, for those of you who might be new here, we have been working on an all iron battery. Uh, this final stage of this year's project is to scale up to a liter size battery. So we've been working at about 20 milliliter size. So that's about the size of a sh half a shot glass. So quite small. Uh, and we've been slowly moving toward a 200 milliliter and then we're going to stack five of those together to make a full liter size. Uh, that should be big enough to start to be modestly practical and at least show that we can produce an all iron battery at a reasonable or useful scale. All iron batteries have the advantage of being inexpensive and fairly safe, easy to produce under ambient conditions, don't require, say, a glove box to avoid oxygen or water, but they're also not very energy dense. So that means that if we want to have a lot of energy, we have to have a really, really big battery. So we need to prove that we can get there. So that's what's going on in the lab. We just found that we can assemble these uh, pouch cells at a larger scale, and we're working on, on getting methods kind of squared away for that. And I think by next week, we should have something to talk about as far as uh, how to assemble a larger cell. Uh, in the meantime, a uh, new paper has come out of an Indian lab. I will put a link to the archive of that in the description, and they're using a sodium cell. Now I've mm, expressed my skepticism about sodium in the past. Sodium ion batteries are going to face some real problems because it's hard to pack sodium into graphite. Lithium slips in between the layers of carbon relatively easily, it doesn't distort the carbon nearly as much. Sodium on the other hand, less expensive, but really tends to make a mess of that carbon material for the anode. So I've suggested that the advantages of cost in sodium are kind of offset by the fact that sodium is heavier and sodium is hard to prack into graphite. However, sodium metal batteries are a different story. And this particular paper is a sodium methyl battery, meaning that you get a source of sodium and you electrochemically plate sodium metal instead of trying to stick sodium ions in between layers of graphite you just plate out the metal in the past that's caused problems in terms of uh, making little wire dendrites of sodium between the anode and cathode for shorts the battery kills it but they seem to have uh, made progress on that the cathode side is a pyrite an iron pyrite a fool's gold uh, cathode that absorbs the lithium during, or rather the sodium during discharge. That's a fairly inexpensive material. It's just iron sulfide, so it's uh, fairly abundant. Iron crops up again, cheap and abundant. And the sulfur, of course, is also a widely used and abundant material. So yeah, that that's exciting. Very earth abundant materials going into a sodium metal battery that shows great performance. It's still archived. It's not a peer reviewed publication yet, but Next Bay Future covered it. And I think it's exciting to see progress like this too. If you're interested in that, click the link in the below. And we will see you all next time.